my name is Warren Limmer, State Senator from Maple Grove, and um, I'm also the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. Whether you agree or disagree with the ballot questions that are coming up in November, the marriage amendment or the voter ID bill, this is a big day for the people of Minnesota. Today, the Minnesota Supreme Court upheld the legislative created titles for both the marriage amendment and the voter ID bill uh, that will be presented to the people in November's general election. The reason why I say this is a big day for the people of Minnesota is that the Supreme Court correctly recognized the constitutional authority of the legislature. The legislature is the representational branch that represents the voice of the people, not the Secretary of State, not the executive branch. And this particular decision recognizes that close relationship between the legislature and the people of Minnesota. As you know, the, the governor does not need to sign a constitutional amendment into law. This is purely the responsibility of the legislature. And just bringing us back to the debate that was held in the Senate, we did have discussion uh, regarding the title. The title, in at least as this author was concerned, had to be neutral and it had to be descriptive. We at first started out with a title that simply said, Recognition of Marriage. Senator Dibble was opposed to that, and he proposed the title that said, uh, Recognition of Marriage Solely Between One Man, One Woman. I accepted it as a, as a friendly amendment. Senator Dibble asked for a roll call, and 49 senators of both parties agreed to that title. Because of that legislative exercise, and the desire to be neutral yet descriptive. We did not want to sway the voter in any manner. We found it objectionable that the Secretary of State would take it upon himself in a unilateral action and in, and in collusion with the Minnesota Attorney General who validated his desire to change the title was, um, was uh, not upheld by, their actions were not upheld by the Supreme Court. They upheld the constitutional authority of the legislature. I uh, want you to know that in, in their decision, the Supreme Court stated this. We hold that the Secretary of State erred and exceeded his authority when he provided titles for the ballot questions on the proposed marriage and voter identification amendments different from the titles chosen by the legislature. Instead, the appropriate titles the Secretary of State must provide are the titles passed by the legislature. In, in those comments, I'm going to open it up to Representative Gutwald, and then we'll stand for questions after he's done. Representative. As Senator Limmer uh, mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Representative Steve Gottwalt, G-O-T-T-W-A-L-T. I represent uh, uh, District 15A, soon to be District 14A, and was chief author of the marriage amendment uh, in the House of Representatives. I'm just pleased today that, that the Supreme Court sought to overturn or deny the unconstitutional action of Secretary of State Mark Ritchie in trying to change the title. These are difficult enough issues for Minnesotans to debate without playing games with the titles. Uh, these bills and their titles were fully vetted through the legislative process and approved by the Minnesota legislature. And they are now before the people of Minnesota. And the Supreme Court ruled, I think correctly, uh, that they do in fact accurately describe what decision is being placed before voters. Um, so as we've already mentioned, uh, agree or disagree, these were accurate titles and, and the legislature was fully within its authority to, to approve those titles and not have, them, uh, not have them altered by the Secretary of State's office. Um, so I'm simply pleased. I think the voters of Minnesota are the winners here, and I think the Constitution of Minnesota uh, is a winner as well. Senator Representative, if I could ask, one of the arguments uh, before the Supreme Court had been that, well, Secretary of State had done this since, what, it was in 1919, uh, so for 80-some years, and the question uh, had been, I think, from the, from the bench, well, does that mean 
that this wrong should perpetuate if it's been going on this long. I mean, do you believe that then secretaries of state have been doing this incorrectly for the last 80 some years? Can I, I mean, you guys, yeah. can, I, can I just speak to this? This was a main talking point of the Solicitor General at the oral arguments. And uh, I just want to say that I think it is factually incorrect. The difference is, is that the state legislature had never proposed a title uh, except in the 1800s on occasion f uh, until very recently. The Legacy Amendment, the Marriage Amendment, and the Voter ID Amendment. So if there was any you know, dispute about validity of amendments, it would only go to the Legacy Amendment. That would be the only one because there was never there was never a dispute there was never a proposed title that was uh, that the Secretary of State and the Attorney General you know in the 1920s or the 1950s or whatever rejected in favor of it and I think it was kind of a fear-mongering argument that was lacked accuracy and I would point out that when the DFLers controlled the legislature in 2008 and passed the legacy amendment they said the very same thing that the Republican uh, legislature said with the voter ID amendment and with the uh, uh, marriage amendment, the appropriate title under the statute is this for the legacy amendment. And the Secretary of State and the Attorney General did nothing that the state statute 204D.15 commands them to do. So their behavior was exactly what I was arguing that they should do. When the legislature speaks, you defer to the legislature. That's what Mark Ritchie and the Attorney General did in 2008, and they and uh, they should have done with these two amendments. The Minnesota Supreme Court basically validated that what they did in 2008 was the right thing, and that they should have done it here. You were an intervener in both the marriage and the photo ID cases. Mm -hmm. Do you think it helps your cause that both of those pass, that the original titles stand? And I think you had said <coughs> a month and a half ago when you were bringing this case that it would hurt the marriage amendment if it said, talked about limiting freedoms. Uh, the, uh, the wording that the Secretary of State had selected started out with the word limiting. Uh, limiting uh, is a negative word. Uh, I believe, I think most people would consider that. It sets the tone. It's the very last um, influence that a voter will have before they consider the question. And when we tried to uh, be as neutral as we could, we knew that the issue itself, the question itself is controversial, but simply introducing the ballot question to the voter that introduction, that threshold that you introduce the subject to the voter must be neutral and yet descriptive. I think Senator Dibble hit it on the head with his language. Um, and, it, and by the way, it wasn't just a, an acceptance of a friendly amendment. Uh, there was a roll call vote. 49 of the 67 senators in a bipartisan fashion accepted it. The, um, I'll, I'll be very, I'm very pleased that we have a neutral and a, uh, a descriptive term that's accurately describing the uh, question before the voters. It's the way it should be. And not in any way should it be designed to sway the voter uh, at that moment. And do you think the titles that Secretary of State Ritchie would have selected on both of these amendments would have swayed the voter? Yes, them? I do. Yes, I do. Is there now a need to um, get rid of 204D? I mean, is that, not, is that an unconstitutional state law? Are you going to move to... Illinois? Well, I believe the, the, the decision made by the Supreme Court probably invalidates it as of this moment due to, in case law. But it will be something that we will have to revisit in the legislature in upcoming sessions and uh, remove it from the books. Any other questions? What about the, the issue raised in the dissent that what this essentially would do, if there's no review then for whatever the legislature decides the title is going to be, um, is there a danger as the, as the dissent raises that that means there, they, there, could be, there could be a blatantly misleading title and no way to fix it? I think to argue that, you would have to argue that the legislative process itself is flawed. Keep in mind that both of these ballot questions were run through the entire legislative process. They went through their committees. They went through extensive floor debate. They went through bipartisan amendments, as you've heard. The legislative process serves well. Um, you know, Justice Page's argument that 
that now this gives the legislature the authority to lie to Minnesotans. Well, there is a whole process of accountability with the legislature representing the people of Minnesota uh, that is at play that, in fact, the, the Supreme Court ruled the Secretary of State cannot countermand that, cannot step in and sub, uh, substitute his judgment for that of the people representing the people of Minnesota. So I, I think that's a little off-center to, to say that, that the legislative process is going to result in a lie to the people of Minnesota. There's a process of accountability for legislators and what comes out of the legislature. To that point, gentlemen, members of both bodies tend to agree that perhaps there needs to be a supermajority vote then for constitutional amendments. Is that something that the two of you would support moving into the next legislative session? And do you think it might be an idea that gains momentum? You know, right now, the people have somewhat of a supermajority requirement when they vote. Uh, it's not just those who vote on the question itself and whoever gets the most votes wins. It's a majority of those going into the ballot booth that will make the decision. And you have to have a majority of the total universe of people coming into the ballot or coming into the election polls that day. Take, for example, if there was only 100 people in the whole universe voting uh, and only 20 people voted on a ballot question, you'd never get to the point of passing a ballot initiative. You need to have a majority of the entire universe of people that enter the voting booth on that election day. So that, in an effect, creates a supermajority of those voting. And it's, and it's designed that way in the Constitution because we just don't want a simple plurality changing the state constitution. It has to be a majority of those uh, showing up to the polls. Sir, I wonder, uh, one of the issues that came up uh, was the speculation, well, perhaps the legislature should put the entire wording of the amendment on the ballot and, and skip this whole process of titles. I mean, do either of you support that, putting the entire language on the ballot? Well, it does become cumbersome. I, I passed the bill, the statutory bill, changing our law to uh, a voter ID bill the year before. Uh, only to be only to have it vetoed by the governor. That bill was <clears throat> nearly a hundred pages long, and so the reason why we don't put line by line the statute into the ballot is that simply there's no room on the ballot for that, and there it probably would cause a lot more confusion once you get into the legalese of the language as well, and so that's why it's an abbreviated fashion. John, how much did your campaign spend to defend the original title, and how is fundraising going? Um, we're not in the habit of discussing those kind of uh, internal expenditures with the media. Uh, our fundraising is going fine. We're on track. Wouldn't that have to be disclosed on your campaign financial reports? Uh, when the, when, the, when the time comes, our expense will be disclosed, yes. But you're not going to say? No, not until then. And it may change by then. Do you think this is the last legal hurdle for the marriage amendment before November? I don't know. If there's others, we're ready. Well, thank you for joining us, um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you.